Perfect. Appreciate that, Scott. And thanks for having us on here today. So as Scott had mentioned, uh, can I get to show you two different products? And they are relatively the same. I can give a little background information here on kind of both sides of the product. So both obviously being a collection stool here. We originally built the one for Microsoft Dynamics GP back in the 90s. So in the 90s, we had developed it, made it our own product. But in the early 2000s, Microsoft actually reached out to us to, under an OEM agreement and basically took the product from us, including it as a core GP feature for close to a decade. In 2013, they did transition the module back to us. We've been developing and supporting it ever since, but we still have customers to this day who often look at it as a core GP feature. With that said, Microsoft reached out to us and said, okay, there's a lot of familiar uh, familiarity around your collections tool. Would you guys be willing to build this for Business Central? And we said, absolutely. Now, again, the reason Microsoft reached out to us in the first place is because we had already created that collections tool for GP. And so basically our goal here in Business Central is to mimic what we have in GP and transfer it over to Business Central. Now, is it gonna be feature for feature exact? No, probably not. It's a completely different ERP system, but in terms of day-to-day -day functionality and automation, that is certainly the goal for us. So what we're looking at here right now is the collection role center. This is really where your collectors are gonna start their day. They can actually see the collection activities that they need to follow up on. Now I'm gonna hop back into this window a couple of times throughout this short little demonstration, but just note this is kind of where your customers or collectors are going to start. But before we even do that, we have a couple of setup items here. Now, the nice thing about Business Central here is it has a naming convention and you can search that if you want to. So we've just labeled all of our features here called Collect 365. So you guys can come in, type in Collect 365 and actually see all the features that we have here. The first thing we need to do is set up a couple of collectors. So we make that pretty straightforward here. You can assign them to a user ID, name, email address, and phone number. Now, one of the features inside of Business Central today is just a normal customer list. However, we've added a little piece inside of here. So let's pull open a Datum Corporation. This is all core Business Central here, but we have added a field called collector inside of this main feature or the customer card. And so you can manually assign these one by one to your customers doing that. Basically what we wanted to do is just make sure we had a field inside of here to show who the collector was for that particular customer. And you might be sitting there asking already, do we have to do that one by one? No, we have a query feature in this uh, Collect 365 module as well that would allow you to bulk assign those to or bulk assign collectors to your customer. So I can show you that here later in the demonstration. But just wanted to briefly mention that. One more setup item here is actually called Collect 365 Setup. And this allows you to predefine your aging bucket. So this is actually kind of cool. You can't really do that on our side in GP. You can obviously manually kind of customize those buckets within GP and collections will recognize that. But we've done that ourselves here in Collect 365. We are using the standard BC functionality to actually kind of number each of these aging buckets, um, but you will be able to come in and kind of customize this. You can set all the way up to 10 aging buckets. Now, I see most customers use three to five, uh, but I have one customer that took advantage of all 10. So you do have the freedom to kind of create those aging buckets there. And you'll see that show up here on the next feature called the Collect 365 Hub. So this is kind of gonna be our main window, if you will. I said the collection role center was going to be the starting point for your collectors, and it absolutely is, but this will likely be the second field or feature that you guys drill into here. And it's basically showing what the main window does. Again, it's a different ERP, so it looks slightly different, but we just want to grab those important collecting details and centralize those in one hub or main window. So I can see all the customer contact details here. I can see who the collector is assigned to that customer. We can actually see the balance due and payments made for that customer. And let me just give you a better example here. Let's do School of Fine Art. So I can see the balance, balance due and payments made. These are actually hyperlinks as well. So I can drill into that and it's gonna pull open a customer ledger entry window. 
showing us the exact payments that have been made. We have the notes listed here and note, I mean that singular, not plural. Uh, we just have the one note as of today that would allow you to send some or put some one-off statements in here. For example, School of Fine Art, customer has net 30 payment terms, customer pays via credit card. However, the feature that we're currently working on for our third release is individual collection notes. It's a huge part of our GP module today. And so we wanna make sure that gets added here relatively quick. It's also a monster of a feature though, as you can imagine, a lot of features and functionality going on with those notes. Um, so we needed one specific release to focus in on that, which we're currently in the process of. So our next release, you'll see these be more individual notes. At the top of the window here, you can actually select more options. You can see we have a few different things that we can do from this window. We could drill into that customer card right from here if we wanted to. And then we can send a one-off email from this window as well. I love the email functionality that our team has come up with for Business Central. As great as it is in GP today, it just took it to the next level here in Business Central. I can actually attach invoice copies from here if I wanted to. And then all I need to do is select a collection letter, just like we did in GP. Let's go ahead and select a few of these invoices and create this email here. So what we've really done is made this functionality compatible with Microsoft Word. I'll pull open the feature here in just a second as soon as this finished generating. But as you can see, the email window in itself allows you to just customize this right from this window. It's kind of like using Microsoft Word right in Business Central here. You can see you got a lot of options to kind of get creative. You can build some tables if you wanted to, and you can add logos in here as well. Not something that you can currently do with the collection letter functionality. So like I said, kind of just took it to the next level, and then you can actually see those invoices at the bottom. You'd be able to pull that open. Your customer can download that right from the window as well. Now, when you're actually creating those letters, and I went ahead, I knew we didn't have a whole bunch of time here on the Business Central side of things, so I went ahead and pulled this open in advance, but you get to create your collection letters in advance via Microsoft Word, and what we've done is we've just used this developer XML mapping pane, and you can actually come in here and just use the functionality and include those right in the body of that letter. So you can see I got those already set up here again, but all you would need to do is just simply drag and drop, and you can actually create letters as you feel fit for your collection activities. So that is the one-off email there. You can actually keep this in your outbox if you wanted to as well, but we're gonna go ahead and discard that for today. Hopping back into this collection hub, you can see we got some contacts for that customer. That's exactly what it is. Who are we actually following up with for the School of Fine Art? We can see the tasks for that particular customer as well. I'm gonna drill into the tasks and how we can create these in just a second, but you'll be able to see that task list for that customer on the collection hub here. And then we have the aging buckets listed down here at the bottom. Again, these are all customizable as we saw earlier, and you can drill into these as a hyperlink. What it does is it pulls open the collector or customer ledger entry window again. And so we tried to make Collect365 here very compatible with these customer ledger entry windows. You can actually drill into those invoice details here right from this window, see the general information, the line items, and total amount. That's core business central, but we wanted to make sure it was compatible with that. And again, you can select multiple invoices if you wanted to from here, or just focus in on an individual invoice. And then we got these actions up here as well. If you drill down into the functions, excuse me, you can see a lot of the things that we can do with this particular invoice. Now, I wanna follow up on the invoice, so I'm gonna create a task for it. Now you can see here it pulls open create collection task. By default, it will pull open who the customer is. I can assign it to a task type. I can create a new one on the fly if I need to. Let's just test it out here today. Let's go ahead and sign it to myself as the admin. And let's schedule this, what's today? The 29th, 30th. All right, let's schedule it for the 10th, so a couple weeks from now. Testing with Endeavor, test, all right. So we'll finish that up and you go, okay, where'd the task go? We're gonna hop back into the collection hub. There you can see it was put on the collection hub for that customer. 
testing with Endeavor. Again, let's hop back into this collector role center. You see nothing has changed right now, but if I refresh this page, you can see we have a new pending action because again, we just created that task for the School of Fine Art. So I drill in and say, okay, what do I have to do here now? Here are the four tasks that I need to follow up on. And there's that new one, testing with Endeavor. Now, the cool thing about this is, you know, I mentioned earlier, this is a starting point for your collectors, right? First thing they might want to come in and do is say, wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. we got 60 grand here overdue. What invoices are past due? I can drill in and just start hammering those out right away. And again, if I needed to, I can just create actions or excuse me, tasks for each one of those invoices as well. So that might be your goal right away. Come in and say, all right, we got what, 10 invoices here that are past due. Let me put some tasks to these so we start to follow up on them. So the back to the role center there. Um, I noticed we only got about six minutes here left. So the last feature I wanna show you is building a query. And so collect 365 naming convention. Uh, what you would do is basically just go through and manually create those again. I already have one of these set up. Now the filters here on collect 365 today are very extensive. We are working on making a more condensed list that's important to your collection information. You might be going, okay, how extensive could it be? It's very extensive. I reached out to our Australia team. I said, look, guys, I, I promise you, we don't need to filter on all of these things. Nobody really needs to know where a UPS zone is when it comes to their collections. So this is core BC functionality. Unfortunately, I couldn't just start eliminating some of these things. I'd probably get major hand slapped by Microsoft, but that's how it stands here today. Again, we're working on a filter in the future that will be more collection specific, um, but you got a lot of filter, a lot to filter by as it stands here right now. Again, just limited in time here, so I wanna make sure I show you how this works. I, I just basically ran a query here that said, hey, show me all of my customers as a collector, and I got four assigned to me today. So I can drill into those lines here, find out who those four customers are, you can see with each click of the button, the invoices are changing down here at the bottom for that customer. I can drill into each individual customer if I wanted to. It shows me that Collect 365 hub. And as I mentioned earlier, we do not need to assign collectors to customers individually. We can do that in bulk if we wanted to. This would allow you to do that from this window. So that is the query functionality there. Again, it's very extensive today, but ultimately the goal is the same as what you saw in Microsoft Dynamics GP today, allowing you to focus in on a specific group of customers that you want to work with based on a number of different restrictions that you have set. With that being said, that is going to wrap up the Collect 365 demonstration. We went through that pretty quickly, but as you guys can obviously see, we're basically just trying to mimic our GP module into the Business Central module as well. So with that being said, let's see if there's any questions here. I did see one come across right away here. Um, looks like it's from Scott here, as mentioned. Uh, yeah, so GP 2018 covers 18.1, 18.2, and 18.4, aka GP 2022. Actually, it's funny you mentioned that, Scott, because I just had our QA guy reach out to me about 15 minutes before this demonstration, and uh, regression testing has been complete for the latest version of Microsoft, so we are compatible there as well. Thank you, Griffin. Yeah. So uh, for those that are new to Endeavor, or just as a recap, uh, we're now into our 32nd year. Three lines of business, advisory services uh, for all your process optimizations, ongoing implementations, upgrades, and support.